Hello, everyone. I want to thank you all for joining me today on my talk on reconstructing the stream pattern of Four Mile Creek in southwestern Ohio. So right here in our own backyard in Oxford, Ohio, prior to European settlement. Essentially, we want to know what streams were like prior to European settlement, and we want to use this information to help inform stream restoration projects within the Midwest. So humans, we've drastically altered streams. We've built dams, we've deforested large regions, especially in Ohio, and we've modified channels. Um, so over here on the right, these are actually cars that are lining the, the banks of the Cuyahoga River in Ohio here. And so essentially stream restoration has become a billion dollar industry as we realize that we need to start restoring these streams. And the stream restoration goals are often things like improving water quality, um, improving habitat for fish and other aquatic life, and sometimes it's simply aesthetic. So we want our streams to look healthy. And these stream restoration projects are designed by engineers, but we don't really have a great understanding of what streams were actually like prior to European settlement. A lot of stream restoration designs restore a stream to this basic single channel form that we see today in a lot of streams. Um, but Walter and Merritt's in 2008 and their study in the Mid-Atlantic Piedmont region, um, they noticed that there was a lot of sedimentation of the floodplain due to European settlement. Um, essentially, we're talking like the building of mill dams, which traps sediment and keeps it in the floodplain rather than the sediment getting transported downstream and um, deforestation, um, and then the erosion and more sediment that enters the stream systems. And so with their study, there's a little bit of a suggestion that potentially these systems were multi-threaded channels with wetlands prior to the current single channel stream pattern that may be more of a product of um, human modification than the, the natural system. And so you can see here in the right, this is that multi-thread multi channel, which has more vegetated islands and more wetlands associated with them. We're asking a similar question, but we wanna know what's going on in Southwestern Ohio. And so we wanna reconstruct the stream pattern of an 18 kilometer stretch of Formal Creek. And if you see here on the right, these are basically abandoned channels that you can see on the 2012 Google Earth imagery for the area. And we want to know, are these single thread channels or multi-thread channels? Um, essentially, are these channels contemporaneous, which would point towards multi-thread, or are they very different in ages um, across the floodplain, indicating more of a single channel um, form? And so we also want to look at floodplain characteristics. Uh, were wetlands extensive and prevalent here prior to European settlement? And so in order to answer these questions, we created a relative elevation model, an REM based map. And essentially, if you look here on the right, this is a digital elevation model. And all it does is essentially give you the actual elevation. So the white here is higher elevation and this kind of blue green down here is the lowest elevation. Now an REM will actually take elevation relative to water level. And so it eliminates the downstream gradient that you see and therefore allows the stream channels to really um, pop. And so we did this to get a better idea of where these channels are and in order to, to map and choose our study sites. And so we also used historic atlases and we overlaid them on that base map in order to see where the stream was at a certain period of time based on what we know from our written record here back to 1836. And then finally, my favorite part um, is the field work. So we actually opened up and excavated trenches um, down here on the lower left and we looked at exposed river outcrops and then we collected stratigraphic and sedimentological data of both the channel and floodplain deposits, um, collecting things such as particle size, looking at channel geometry, and then the presence of any organic rich buried soils that could indicate wetlands. Um, over here on the right, this is actually the Walter Merritt study and the buried wetland deposits that they found. So we're looking for any sort of similar deposits. And so we also, collected samples for radiocarbon dating and dendrochronology. Um, it's very important that when you're describing units that you also get ages. Um, you don't have much of a story if you don't know how old the deposit is. And so we have to make sure that what we're looking at is um, prior to European settlement um, in order to see the difference. Okay, and so here is a figure from a study of Four Mile Creek, my rack of it at all. And what's indicated here is what's suspected to be a prehistoric soil. It's very organic rich with a historic soil on top. 
And then here's some logs that were radiocarbon dated as well. And so for preliminary results, we dug three trenches at Leonard Howell Park, just north of Bonham Road. And we basically chose these spots to be on these channels that are evident from the REM. And we wanted to know if these might be contemporaneous um, indicators of a multi-thread channel. And so the results that we got, um, we don't have the radiocarbon sample dates back yet, but based on simply just the stratigraphy, we are seeing a lot of floodplain deposits, pretty similar amount of deposits on top for both of these, and then channel deposits at the bottom. And so we um, suspect they may be very similar in age, but we're going to have to get the radiocarbon ages back to get, get a better idea on that. Um, also, when we're looking at floodplain characteristics, um, one of our stations um, along the river when we paddled, um, Station 11B, gave us some insights. So this is the outcrop that we described. We noticed this kind of organic rich muck, more or less, at the bottom of the unit, just on top of the gravels, the channel gravels. And then above that, we noticed these nice logs here in the outcrop. And so we decided to describe this section. And as we uh, dug out this log, we actually discovered that it's not just a log, it's actually a cut piece of wood. Um, and so we can, or we're assuming that this must be historic um, to have been cut in this manner. And so essentially, um, until we get dates back on this to be sure, it appears that at least everything from this log and up must be historic. And so this is a lot of sedimentation and we also have to get ages back on the lower mucky organic ridge deposit to see if that might be a buried soil that could have be indicative of a floodplain prior to European settlement. So for next steps, we need to continue doing more field work, looking at more outcrops. Um, we also need to process the radiocarbon and dendrochronology samples in order to get our age control, which will be incredibly helpful in piecing together this puzzle. Um, currently, there's more evidence for consistently meandering single channel stream system, but the verdict's still out on that. And there seems to be limited evidence for wetland deposits, but again, getting ages back is going to help us with understanding um, if maybe all the deposits we're looking at are actually historic. Um, and that might be why we're not seeing any wetland deposits. So the implications of this project um, is that we're gonna get a better understanding of the superficial geology of Four Mile Creek. We largely don't really know how stream systems responded in this area ever since the glaciation 24,000 years ago. And we also want to use the surficial geologic record to better inform um, stream restoration project designs. And then finally, if we do find evidence that this could potentially have been a multi-thread channel in the, the past, um, and if it were possible to restore such systems in the Midwest to um, those multi-thread channels, there'd be a potential to decrease nutrient pollution due to those in-stream wetlands that can really provide uh, denitrification services. And so with that, um, these are my references and I will take any questions that you have. Uh, thank you so much for listening.